Before we bring you tonight's Tales of the Texas Rangers, here's a Christmas message all of us associated with this program would like you to hear. Christmas is just two weeks away, and unless everybody helps in his own city or town, there are some less fortunate children who will not receive Christmas gifts. Let's everyone join your local groups and give a thing, a thing for kids for Christmas. In your town, there are one or more agencies collecting toys for less fortunate children. Do your part and contribute the things you can. Thank you. The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, The Lucky Dollar. It is 7.30 of a simmering hot night. August 14th, 1945. In a small South Texas town not far from Corpus Christi, Joe Barry is counting up the day's receipts of his modest store. His wife, Clara, is locking up in back. What the... Joseph! Well, what's happened to the lights? I'm not through back here. Well, I didn't turn them off, Ma. One of the fuses must have blown. You think it could be the refrigerator again? No, I just put in a whole new unit, didn't I? Hey, you just stay where you are, Claire. I'll get my flashlight here and see what the trouble is. Be careful, Joseph. <laughs> and don't worry, honey. I'll be careful. Yeah, let's see what we got here now. Yeah, all these fuses look good. Joseph? Uh, everything seems all right in here, Ma. Must be in the main switch box. I'll take a look outside. Well, I'll be done. Main switch is pulled. Now, who in thunder... Let me think, Pop. Huh? Keep your back to me and give me a flashlight. What? Who are you? Never mind. Now, hold up. Uh, Nobody's going to hold up Joe Berry. I'll call you all fool. Oh, oh fool. Joseph? Joseph? Joseph, what on earth are you doing trying to count up here with so little? Dear me, Joseph, what are you doing? Keep away, old woman. Joseph! Get away from that cash register. Shut up! You crazy old bat. When Joseph Barry regained consciousness, he staggered to the phone and called Sheriff Jennings, who, in turn, requested help from the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was at the scene of the crime a short time later. It's just like Barry said, Sheriff. A thief pulled his master switch outside the store to draw out the storekeeper. And he must have thought Joe was alone in the store. Sure he did. Too bad he wasn't. Mrs. Barry would be alive now. Well, let's go inside again, Sheriff. I'd like to ask Barry a few more questions. You know, Jace... This is mighty like another holdup we had in this area just a week ago. Yeah? Liquor store. No gunplay, but otherwise just the same. Main switch pulled. Owner went out to check the fuses. Was slugged. Nobody saw the thief? Nobody. But it could be the same guy. Mm, could be. Mr. Barry. Here, yes, stranger. Find anything more? Maybe. I know this is hard on you, but I'd like to ask a few more questions. Uh, 
Go right ahead, Ranger. Ask all you want. I'll do anything to catch the devil that, that murdered my wife. I know. You're sure you didn't get a good look at the burglar? Something you could remember as identification? No, sir. He came up on me out of nowhere. No sound, nothing, until he spoke. Then we fought. But that voice... I'd remember that whispering voice anywhere. He spoke. You didn't mention that before, Joe. Uh, didn't I? It's kind of hard to think right now, Sheriff. With poor Clara. What'd the burglar say, Mr. Barry? Oh, not much, Ranger. But I'd know that voice. I'd know it all right. Well, go on. Try to remember it. Word for word. Uh, he said, hold everything, Pop. Keep your back to me and hand over your flashlight." And then when I fought him, let go, you old fool. That's all. He hit me, and the next thing I knew, I, I saw Clara. It's all right, Mr. Barry. I won't ask you to talk much more now, but would you mind coming over to the cash register for a minute? Sure. I'll come with you. There was so little in the till, Ranger. Only $45 it was. $45 for my Clara. Look here, Mr. Barry. Hmm? Can you tell me about this piece of adhesive stuck on the front of the register? Looks like something was pasted here. It was, Ranger. That murdering skunk even took the first dollar this store ever made. My lucky dollar. Lucky dollar? Yeah. Had it stuck up there on the register with a couple of pieces of adhesive tape. He took it. Not all of it, Mr. Barry. Look here. A corner of the bill is still stuck under this piece of adhesive. Must have torn off when he grabbed it. It's not much to go on, Jase. It's a start, Sheriff. A dollar bill that matches this torn corner and the bullets from Mrs. Barry's body. <laughs> Clara. Clara. How can we help him, Jase? And the best thing for him is some rest, Sheriff. I'll leave it to you. All right. What about you? I'm hoping we can pick up some fingerprints on the register here and from the outside switch box. I'll radio the lab crew to fly down here and we'll see what they can find. Meantime, we'll notify all banks to be on the lookout for a sticky dollar bill with one corner missing. The lab crew came in from Austin and gathered all evidence. By the next day, I had a report from Captain Stinson. On that very robbery and homicide, Jase. Yeah, Captain. Any make on the bullets or prints? Nothing on the bullets. All we know is that they're from a thirty-two. But on the prints, that's another thing. The lab dug up something interesting. What's that? No direct prints, Jase, but the thief wore cotton gloves. There's an imperfection in the weave of the left thumb. Well, it's not a lot to go on, Captain. I know it, Jase. You got any more leads? Not exactly, but we don't think it was done by somebody just passing through. No, why not? Because Sheriff Jennings had a similar robbery in this area last week with the same M.O. Pulled the switch and worked in the dark. A lot of people down there with the cotton season in full swing, aren't there? Swarms of them. Reckon it could be a cotton worker? Uh, it's hard to say. Well, if it is, you've got a big territory to cover, Jase. Well, I got an old dollar bill working for me, too, Captain. Yes. And by the way, Jase, all the banks in your territory will have blow-ups of the torn corner of that bill by morning. Good. I guess all we can do now, Captain, is sweat it out and wait for that dollar bill to pay off. <laughs> Captain Stinson made good his promise. By next morning, every bank in the area had a description of the missing lucky dollar and photos of the torn corner. Three days went by. Then, on the 19th of August, a man walked into State Bank. Yes, what can I do for you? Money. Here is money to pay for the loan on my house. Oh, we have a loan on your house? See. Si. Your name, please? Uh, Ramos. Juan Ramos. Oh, I'll get your records, Mr. Ramos. Uh, uh, what is wrong, senor? This dollar bill you gave me, uh, uh, corners torn away. But it's good. The dollar is good, no? Oh, sure, sure, but, uh, uh just a minute, please. Huh? Oh, okay. Hello. Hello, operator. Get me the sheriff's office. Sheriff's office, Jenny speaking. Hello, Sheriff. This is Jim Loftus over at the bank. Oh, yes, Jim. What can I do for you? Fella just came in the bank and handed me that dollar you're looking for. He did? Yeah. Fellow by the name of Juan Ramos. He's here now. I see. Hold on a minute. What's up, Sheriff? Man by the name of Ramos just passed a dollar at the bank that answers the description of the lucky dollar we've been looking for. He's still there. Tell him to stall him. He'll be right over. Hello, Jim. Yes, Sheriff. We're coming right over, and don't let that Ramos get away. This 
is the missing lucky dollar, all right, Sheriff. See how it matches? But I swear to you, Ranger, I do nothing wrong. I come to the bank to make payment for my house. Where'd you get this dollar, Ramos? Well, I earn it, Ranger. King sabe where it come from. One day I work one place, one day another place. Who knows where I get paid the dollar? Where was your last job? Well, I, I worked for five days for Mr. Larson, Sheriff. You know, I cross the tracks. Larson? Odie yeah. Larson runs a sort of swap shop in the Mexican settlement, Jace. It's a dump, but Odie does a pretty good business. Let's go see Mr. Larson, then. Maybe he'll be able to tell us something about Ramos and the lucky dollar. <laughs> Tell him, Mr. Larson. Sure, Ramos works for me, Ranger, but only for a few days. Mr. Larson, look carefully at this dollar. Hmm. What about it? Ever see it before? Mm, how do I know, Ranger? A dollar's a dollar, ain't it? Not always. Feel this one, for instance. Kind of sticky. And the edge is torn. Try to remember, Rody. It's very important. To you. To me. An old lady was shot down, killed, by someone who stole this particular dollar. An old lady. That dollar come from someone who... No, 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 no. I didn't do it, Ranger. I earned the dollar here from Mr. Larson. Take it easy, Ramos. Say, maybe I do remember this dollar, Ranger. You do? And it seems to me a little Mexican girl give it to me. Sure, I remember because it stuck to the other money she gave me. You know where we can find her? Uh, I uh, think she works at one of the cotton farms near her, Sheriff. I don't know for sure, but... She give me this dollar and two more to pay down on a red silk dress. Yeah, I'll show you. It's in the back room. Never mind that, Mr. Larson. Just when did she pay you on the dress? Uh, just last evening, Ranger. Yeah, I keep open at night for the workers, uh, the cotton pickers. I paid off Ramos when we closed up. Must have given him that sticky buck along with the rest of his pay. <laughs> I told you, Mr. Larson, give me that dollar. The girl say when she'd be back for a dress. Today. You've never seen the girl before, Mr. Larson? You don't know her name or where she lives? Mm, no. Didn't you give her some kind of receipt for her deposit? Oh, sure, but just for the three bucks. When she brings in the receipt and the rest of the money, she gets the dress. Don't need a name and address for that. What do you think, Chief? I think we'll wait for the lady, Sheriff. Meantime, Ramos. Uh, see you, Ranger. Stick around town. I may want to talk to you again. See you, see you, Ranger. Gracias. Gracias. Now, Mr. Larson, you mind if we wait for the girl in the back room? Mm, of course not, Ranger. Just come this way. It ain't much to look at. All this junk piles in here, but make yourselves comfortable as you can. Don't worry about us, Mr. Larson. Just go on about your business as if we weren't here. When the girl comes in, let us know. You can depend on that, Ranger. I will. Jace, do you reckon Odie's telling us the truth? I don't know, Sheriff. We ought to find out pretty soon. I got a hunch that lucky dollar is going to hit the jackpot. You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. We continue now with tonight's case, The Lucky Dollar. An authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. We waited in the back room for some time. Larson had a good trade, plenty of customers, but nobody wanting a red silk dress. Then about an hour later, a Mexican girl walked into the store. Hello. I come for my dress. You know that red dress? Jeez. Easy, Sheriff. Uh, yeah, sure, I remember. Got the rest of the money? See, si. here you are. Mm, Six dollars. Yep, that's right. Now, you wait here now, and I'll go get the dress. It's her, Ranger. It's Come her. on, Sheriff. You, young lady. Me? What is it, Ranger? You mind telling me your name, where you live? Chita Marsalis. I live right now at Mr. Compton's farm. I pick cotton. My whole family works there. My mother, father, brothers. That's Cat Compton. I know him, Jace. Owns one of the biggest farms in these parts. When does he pay his pickers, Sheriff? Like the rest. Once a week. Saturdays. What's wrong? Why you ask this question? Because you paid this dollar down on a dress last night, Cheetah. It's a dollar we've been looking for. This dollar? Yeah, where'd you get it? 
For my pay, I get for working in the fields, picking cotton. If you're a picker, how come you're off work at this time of day? I want to get my new dress. I ride into town in one of the trucks. You can walk off your job anytime you feel like it, Cheetah. It's my business. You're wrong there, young lady. It's plenty of our business when you pass a stolen dollar. Stolen? Come on. You're going back to the Compton Farm with us. <laughs> Sheriff Jennings and I drove Cheetah Marsalis back to the Compton Farm. The girl had her new red dress, but it didn't seem to make her happy. We found Prescott Compton at one of the trucks near the main house, weighing the cotton his pickers were bringing in. And that's Compton right over there. You made it two and a half pounds, Pedro. Okay, I'll bring that to your count. Dump off. Miss hey, Compton. Mr. Compton. Well, howdy, sir. This is Ranger Pearson. We'd like to talk to you. Of course. Does this girl work for you, Mr. Compton? She do? Well, sure she does, Ranger. Whole Marsalis family works for me. They're fine people. Hey, what are you doing away from the fields, Cheetah? You haven't gotten yourself in any trouble, have you? I've done nothing, Mr. Compton. She passed this dollar bill that was stolen in a robbery and killing four days ago, Mr. Compton. Cheetah can't seem to remember where she got it unless it was from you. Not from me, she didn't. That robbery was four days ago. I pay off on Saturdays, Ranger. Where a whole family is hired, like the Marsalis, I pay the head of the family. In this case, the father. Let's see that dollar, Ranger. Here you are. No, sir. I didn't get this for me. I'd swear it. I've been paying my pickers off with new bills. New bills? Mm-hmm. Well, Cheetah? I didn't do anything wrong, Ranger. I don't know where that dollar came from. Well, we'll soon settle this, Ranger. Cheetah's brother is working right close here. Carlos. Carlos. Oh, no. Oh, Carlos. Please. Hey. Come over here, man, boy. Say, senor, say, momentino, amigo. Say, senor, what do you want? Cheetah, where are you being? Papa look everywhere for you. The uh, ranger here wants to ask some questions, Carlos, about some money your sister has. It's been a little trouble. Trouble? Trouble with Cheetah? What you done? Did your father give her any spending money, Carlos? Hey, Papa give us all a little. See, ranger, see. Fifty, maybe seventy-five cents. And he never give Cheetah as much as eight or nine dollars at a time, huh? Oh, no, senor, never. She'd have never had that much. Any idea where she might have gotten it? I can guess. From Dandy Shut Bird. Up, Carlos. From who? Dandy Bird. Donald, uh, Dandy Bird has worked for me for over a year, Ranger. Trustworthy, so far as I know. Except he fancies himself sort of a ladies' it's man already. No, it's not so. Cheetah. What do you want? Did Donald Bird give you this dollar? No, I tell you, I don't know where I get that dollar. Then you lie, Cheetah. <laughs> hey, take it easy, Marcellus. You should go get the money from no other place, senor. In front of this, this dandy. And no sister of mine go to take money from a man like that. Where does Bird work, Mr. Compton? Well, Carlos can take you right to his truck, Ranger. See, you better show you the way, Ranger. And you, little sister, you pick your cotton here across to the house where I can keep an eye on you when we come back with your fine dandy. Get you in, everybody. Come on, Sheriff. Carlos, let's get started for Bird's truck. <laughs> Marsalis directed us along the road through the cotton fields to where Donald Bird had been working. A trailer was there, but the truck was nowhere in sight. Hey, that's strange, senor. I know he was working here. Hey, Sam, come over here a minute, huh? Come right over, boy. Maybe move to another part of the field. No, I don't think so, Sheriff. What do you want, Carlos? Where's Dandy Bird? This ranger, he want him. What, Dandy drove out of the field three or four hours ago, Mr. Ranger. He had full load. He's in town? He sure is, boss, at the cotton gin. Mr. Dandy get himself some kind of trouble? I'm going to make him plenty of trouble if he don't leave Cheetah alone. Your sister? Well, she drove into town with Dandy. She did. And she lied to us twice, Sheriff. Bird was at the gin when she came to the store for her dress. Sure he was. Thanks for the information, Sam. Oh, glad I can help, Mr. Ranger. Carlos. Si, senor. Can you give us a good description of Dandy Bird? See, si, see. Si. He's about as tall as the sheriff. That makes him five foot ten. He's si. thin, blonde. Color eyes? In blue. Pale blue. Cold like a snake's eyes. Uh, no scars, no distinguishing marks? No, senor. Uh, only he is always dressed up, even in a truck at work. He dresses fancy. That's why they call him Dandy. That's a pretty good description, Jace. Couldn't be hard to pick him out in the crowd. Oh, please, Ranger, let me go with you to town. Eh? No. You can do more good back at the farm, Carlos. I'll drop you there. You keep an eye on your sister until we contact you again. Eh, bueno, senor. We'll head back for town, Sheriff. We'll pick up Dandy at the cotton gin. There 
was a big lineup of trucks at the Cowden Gin, but we didn't see any driver that answered Dandy's description. Sheriff Jennings and I went up to the loading platform and headed for the superintendent's office. Here we are, Jay. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Ranger Pearson would uh, like some information, Mr. Cullen. Why, sure. Come on in my office so we can hear ourselves talk. Here. Have a chair, gentlemen. Uh, Now, how can I help you? You know most of the drivers by sight, don't you, Mr. Collins? I'd say so, Ranger. The regulars, anyway. But there's a heavy crop this year. You saw the line of trucks outside. Well, there's lots of new drivers. The man we want is regular, Mr. Collins. Works for Press Compton. Man's name is Donald or Dandy Bird. Dandy? Why, sure, I know him. Funny, you should ask for him, too. Oh, somebody else wanted him? Yeah, phone call came in here about half hour ago. Phone call? Mm-hmm. I went out on the platform and gave a yell. Dandy moved up close to the head of the line, and he climbed out and came back in the office with me. Then you heard the conversation? What there was of it, Ranger. I wasn't paying much attention. But it seems to me he did say something about meeting somebody at the same place tonight. Then he hightailed out of here, and I haven't seen him since. You any idea where he went? No, and I wish I did. Left the truck standing, blocking the whole line. You're looking for Dandy Bird, Ranger. I'd like to get my hands on him myself. Well, thanks, Mr. Collins. Oh, uh, one thing more. Uh, do you know who called Bird on the phone? I uh, know. Sounded like some little Mexican gal. I left Sheriff Jennings scouring the town for Bird while I went back to the Compton farm to have a talk with Cheetah. We didn't have much time. It was getting dark. As I turned off the highway onto the Compton Road, I saw Carlos Marsalis running toward me. Ranger! Ranger Pearson! Yeah, what is it, Carlos? Cheetah, senor. She's gone. What? I thought I told you to keep an eye on her. I did, I did, senor. But she went into a shock and I wait. But when she don't come out, I go in and Cheetah's gone. Her clothes, everything. And then I look out the window. I see her stopping the bus. I, I run after her, but it's no use. The bus was gone. A bus? Past me coming down here. Pile in, Carlos. We'll follow it. Carlos Marsalis and I followed that bus for 18 miles. Then we saw Cheetah get off in a town that wasn't more than a whistle stop. She went into a dingy beer joint. It was small, but plenty noisy. Parked the car where it wouldn't be noticed, and we sat there for almost an hour. Why should my sister go into a place like that? I hope it's because of Dandy. I hope he shows up. I'm going to kill him. Leave that to the state, Carlos. You'll get what's coming to him. See, si, but just to sit here, Ranger, doing nothing. Hey, wait a minute. Look, going into the cantina now. Huh? Is that Bird? See, si, see, si, that's him, Ranger. Let me go, huh? No. You stay here, Carlos. And I mean it. See, si, Ranger, whatever you say. I buy a beer, baby? Dandy. Oh, Dandy, darling. I was so afraid you wouldn't come. <laughs> I told you I wouldn't on the phone, didn't I? Do you see, you did. But I was so frightened. First that ranger. Then I had a big fight with my family. Carlos even hit me. Poor kid. I leave them, Dandy. I leave my family because I love you. Yeah, sure, nobody followed you here, kid. No. No one even saw me leave the farm. Good. I can do without them rangers snooping on my tail. Uh, waiter, uh, two beers. Si, senor. Dandy, what you do to make those rangers come for you? Do? What does anybody do to get the rangers after them? Those guys are always looking for trouble. Hey, what about them beers? See, si, mister, right away. Dandy, you tell me the truth? Hmm? For you, I leave my family, Dandy. I love you. Yeah, yeah, I know, baby. The beers, senor. Ah, just in time. Boy, am I dry. <sighs> like I said, kid, Dandy Bird never makes trouble for nobody. I got plans for you. Dandy, what's wrong? The ranger coming in the door. Huh? He's heading this way. Put away that gun, Dandy. Come on, Cheetah, we're getting out of here. The bus... There we are, Bird. So you did leave the rangers here. No, Dandy. You stay where you are, ranger. Don't go for your guns. I got the girl in front of me. Dandy, let me go. No, 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 babe. You're staying close to me. Dandy! Get the girl out of the way, Bird. Keep away from that door. Not on my life, Ranger. You try to come in, you hit her first. You treat me Uh, like this. You don't love me. Who's your devil? (laughs) 
Let me get this door open. Don't come any closer, Ranger. He has a gun, Ranger. Get away from him, Cheetah. Dandy, let me go. I see. Here you look. Cheetah, hold it, Dandy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't shoot no more, Ranger. Don't shoot no more. I'm done. You sure are. Too bad you didn't stick to the cotton business. Come on, Dandy. On your feet. The cotton glove with the imperfect weave was found on Donald Byrd at the time of his capture. Confronted with this and the undeniable evidence establishing his gun as the murder weapon, Donald Dandy Byrd made a full confession. Cheetah Marcellus was given a suspended sentence of five years. Byrd was sent to the state penitentiary at Huntsville for the rest of his life. And now, here again is the star of our show, Joel McRae, with another interesting anecdote about the Texas Rangers. In the early oil boom days of Texas, the rangers were faced with a problem of rounding up lawbreakers and holding them in custody until they could get them to the nearest jail, which might be 50 miles away. Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez, now commander of Company B, Texas Rangers, used a novel fresh air jail that became known as the Ranger Trotline. It was simply a long chain strung up between two posts with 50 or 60 trace chains attached. When an arrest was made, he padlocked the free end of the trace chain to his prisoner and left him there to face the jibes and laughter of the local citizens. Though it's no longer used today, the ranger trot line started quite a few would-be bad men on the straight and narrow path. And to this day, there are some characters who still can't stand the sight of a trace chain. Good night, folks. See you same time next week. Good night, Joel. Folks, there have been so many requests for the Texas Ranger prayer read by Joel McRae a few weeks ago that there has been some delay in answering all of the mail. If your copy of the Texas Ranger prayer has not been received as yet, please be patient. You should receive your copy soon. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Saddle Tramp. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Nestor Piva, Peggy Weber, Lou Krugman, Herb Butterfield, Byron Kane, Wilms Herbert, and Barney Phillips. This story was transcribed and adapted by Virginia M. Cook, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. This is Hal Gibney speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. It's yo-ho for the open sea tomorrow as the Railroad Hour presents Gilbert and Sullivan's comic opera, The Pirates of Penzance, starring Gordon McRae, Lucille Norman, and Clark Dennis. Gordon McRae will star in the comedy character role of the Major General. This will be the third of Gilbert and Sullivan's musical whimsies offered on the Railroad Hour. For music in a more serious manner tomorrow, the NBC Symphony brings you another hour-long concert of some of the world's greatest music under the baton of the brilliant young conductor Guido Cantelli. Now the $64 question. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. 